they are learning from us. Mm. The CIA sent a lot of investigators in South Africa so that they can learn from Sangoma's secrecy of things that can help South America. This is The Hustler's Corner. Good afternoon, Sanbonani Absheni. Good afternoon from our, our friends all over the world, brothers and sisters, hustlers and squatters. It's another exciting Monday, the 12th of September. Remember, guys, next week, Wednesday, that's when we leave for Inzalue Lang, Mpumalang. Thank you. As usual, tradition of the show says we go straight to that um, like button. Let's click that on the count of one, two, three. Click, 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 click. Thank you. Click the subscription button so the family gets to grow. Click. Don't forget to switch on that notification bell so it lets you know when we drop our brand new videos. Um, guys, in an hour's time from now, now it's 12 o'clock, in an hour's time at one o'clock, we've been asking you to subscribe to Virtual Mkuku's own YouTube platform. So on that YouTube platform, there's content there. So click the link in the description, it'll take you to the Virtual Mkuku's own platform. We drop content there Mondays and Thursdays as well. So myself and Penuel, we have recorded an interesting episode where we were talking about the passing of the Queen, we were talking about some of the things that have happened in global news over the past week. That episode starts at one o'clock. That's an hour from now on Virtual Mkuku's platform, not here. So uh, every time after watching this every Monday at 12, after you finish watching from here, you can go that side on Virtual Mkuk at one o'clock. We always gonna have some brand new content for you there. And we also have on Thursdays. But still talking about Mondays, we drop a lot of content on Mondays. Penuel, the black pen, he drops uh, a lot of content on his platforms as well on Mondays. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. The links are in the description. I also drop a lot of content on Mondays. Before I get into our brand new guest, I'm excited to be with Penuel under the trees, under the sun. Uh, it's spring on the 12th of September. Oh, yes. <laughs> How you doing, bro? No. I'm good, how are you? I'm good, man. You no, know, some of us own a little bit, a little bit of land. Yeah. So it must show in how we move that we are not confined. <laughs> so no, I'm I'm very thankful to be here. Shout out to the squatters. Uh, shout out to the hustlers, of course, of the hustlers corner. And yeah, please join us on the other channel. Let's grow our little baby. Uh, we've given birth to a little baby that you guys can come join. Uh, and happy African New Year, happy spring. Let's enjoy the sun, enjoy vitamin D, and enjoy this beauty that is Africa, that is paradise, the Garden of Eden. And since this season that we're on, a lot of conscious people in the conscious community or Pan-Africanists or people that are in the African education space. Tina, we just want to learn. We're a learning platform, an educational platform. We're always excited to have people to come here and teach us and people to learn from. Yeah. And, and it's also not that when they come, everything they're saying is the truth. You can yeah. disagree with it. You're more than welcome to. Now, but as they say, it's usually just basic conversations. Mm. And they're not saying what they're saying. But it's, it's gospel truth now. They're, they're just paying us a visit to share a, a, a conversation that, you know, we all hope will, will, be a teachable, uh, will be teachable to somebody out there who might be watching. Yes. So since we're in this season, um, you know, you'll see a lot of, especially this September month, a lot of content around African spirituality. We had a great episode last week with Joshua Maponga. Big up to you for that one. Thank you. Yeah, you held it down nicely. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present. Thank you very much for allowing a space for us to share energy, to listen to wisdom, to offer our little two cents nyana, of our little wisdom nyana. Uh, a lot of people were blessed in that episode. I'm very thankful to all the squatters and the hustlers that watched the episode, shared it. It's got a good view count, which means to me, we are infiltrating a lot of minds and planting good seeds that they can harvest as time goes on. And still talking about Indos of Africa is Indos a scene too. We also had another very successful episode, No Coco's Koteni. Uh, when we were talking about this Indos a scene too, she touched on a lot of that. A lot of you guys disagreed with her. A lot of you guys agreed with her. But it was a beautiful episode as well. And the brother that I've invited, you guys have enjoyed him. And you said he must come back. The previous episode, I, held, I had him all by, himself, all by myself. I had him all to myself. <laughs> Uh, that episode is actually a successful episode, over 100,000 views, go check it out. Yeah. But this time around, I said, let me invite Umkulu, but let me have Penuel. So I introduced them to meet each other. And let's have a discussion since we're in this season of um, people discussing the African calendar, people discussing the African New Year. And he's also part of the people that come from that family tree, or let me say students of the great Okoko Credo Muta. We'll hear, we'll hear a thing or two from him. I'm excited about it and I'm definitely sure my brother Penuel is looking forward to this one. No, I am. Uh, 
Nassim Tanda Akulu, please welcome to the virtual Nkuku with us. And I just want to greet oh. you officially again on camera. So just no, it's just a problem with us. It's just a problem with us. just a problem with us. I'm not used to most of the greetings. There's different greetings. Yes. You know, when you go to um, the Kiyombo people who are called the Bao, who speak the language called Bua in Dravian lands, there in India, far away, they're black like us. When they greet people, they cheek each other with their forehead. Okay. They greet each other like that. So there's many different ways of greetings, and these greetings symbolize communication, particular communication. That is why the world is building structures of four corners and 90 degrees and 108 angles or 180 degrees of the reflect of the planet the way we are seeing it. So obviously the greeting is a symbiology of communication. No, thank you very much. I was fascinated. Sorry, sorry, Sposito, please. And maybe before you start this episode, guys, starting from last week with the Bishop Joshua Maponga episode, we've decided to go live on the comment section. Go crazy. Whatever you disagree with or you agree with or whatever whatever you have in your heart, you've always been teaching us. We don't open the live comment section, the live chat section, so you guys can go crazy. It's open. Comment as much as you can as we are all learning. Sorry about that. Let's no, go. no problem. Uh, I was fascinated by the conversation you had with uh, Usbu Siso, uh, and I realized you're a huge fanatic and student of etymology. Yes. So if you could quit a, first start by explaining to myself and to the squatters, what is etymology and why is it so important for all of us? Oh, etymology is important because it's a use and a form of a language and its origin, how it influences psychologically the community, social structures and how it changes. So the meantime you know the etymology of the word, you'll understand how you behave. Because sometimes you'll talk things without knowing. As far as they've said it in most other videos, other people going out there saying that English is a spell. True English is a spell. It's a reverse spell. So because some other words don't literally mean what you assume. They mean something else. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you have true content of what things mean. Even the cosmology, you'll understand it clearly. You'll be one with everything around you. One of the questions I thought I'd ask you later, but since you're raising it, I'd like to bring it now. Could it be argued, based on my education and my knowledge, could it be argued that language is God, language has an influence over people's psychology to a point where you can get them to behave in a certain way and get them to believe in certain things. True. What happens when you take what we know as language away? Uh, if you take a language from someone, it's like stripping them from their covered clothes because they'll be naked. And when they are naked, they become an embarrassment in their own community that wears clothes. So a language is something that forms our identity mm. and it forms our articulates and understanding of the cosmology. Similarly to English, it has borrowed a lot of words from Greeks, it has borrowed a lot of words from Indo-Germany, it has borrowed a lot of words from Latin. Same to Arabic and Hebrew. But it's not a pure language as English, that is why it becomes a cast language. But the original language has identity of things around you. You can relate with them. So if I strip you that, you are no more relating with something that is around you or yourself. Can you simplify it? Mm. Uh, in a simple way, if I strip you your toy, your favorite toy, that help you in achieving some other things, maybe your guarding machine or something, mm. then you, you'll have a lot of dirty guarding or a chaotic place. Mm rather than a neat place. So if you are stripped your language, you couldn't articulate some concept clearly, like scientific concept. When we talk about um, science, they will tell you that, no, Zulu doesn't have science. Oh, so do I. We get it from Europe. Yes. But in our language, we have ways to identify scientific concepts. Like a, a spaceship, we have a way for a spaceship. In Duendwe, we have a way for a pyramid. In Dongolo, we have the word for everything, detail to detail. Mm. But now, because we are stripped of our language, we need to depend on the language we are using now, that is English. Mm. Meaning when you speak your own language, you couldn't put things into detail. 
what happens when language is taken away? So you're speaking about stripping someone of their clothing. Yes. Can God and culture exist without language? If you look at, for example, the animal kingdom, who communicate in various ways, but they don't have the type of language, formalized languages that we have. Could it be argued that when you take language away, you remove the essence of God, you remove the essence of culture? And if that is the case, does that mean God only exists through language? Uh, let's start with this. <clears throat> it is said, thought when it came out, an emergency, an existence from the doom of darkness. He came out speaking, meaning he spoke the way. That is why you get it even in the Bible, that in the beginning was the word wavering in the waters of doom, meaning the medieval waters, the old waters, the sky, universe itself, whatever we want to call it. But at the end of the day, when the word appeared, it formed things, it formed light, it separated day and night. So this word, it had a language, a spoken language. It's the same language that is spoken in symbiology, explaining to the Boer people that they greet in a different greeting mm. than the rest of others. But the same greeting, it's a language, it's a communication. It's the way they view the world. It's the way they succumb to their environment. But now when you are stripped of that, you are no more communicating with who you are. In simple talk, they will say you are possessed by demons mm. in the religious understanding. But in our understanding, scientifically, you have been stripped the essence of who you are. And when you don't have the essence of yourself, you have lost everything. Now, what do you say about us praying in English? It's the same way. When we pray in English, we can understand it. But does the universe understand us? Does our own science frequency or what we call sound frequency the sound frequency that we produce from the words we say they have connection with everything around us they can tap into different wave of frequencies same as musical frequencies so in your vocal talk you have the 447 you have the hn heights that reach to the highest uh, what do you call delta state or alpha state of your mind where your mind can be altered to do other things. Mm -hmm. That is why uh, when we have a leader from Korea speaking Korean language, they have confidence and they are too cocky about their language, which means they are not limited. But when we have our African leaders speaking in English, they are limited. They sound like little babies. They sound like uh, children, yeah. you know, who are meeting their grandmasters. So at the end of the day, language does have a form of stripping a person. If it strips your dignity, how much it strips you spiritually? So you need to know that God, true, is a language. The meantime, we understand words that they form a language. Mm. And the meantime, we understand that symbiology, it forms a language. Because mm. there's neuro-linguistic neuro language, the language that is spoken through your neural, neural nervous system through signs and symbols. That is called NLP in psychology. How does that relate to what Koko Credo Muta spoke about? Uguti? Apparently, this is me saying apparently. He didn't say apparently. He said it was actually a fact that they used to communicate um, telepathically. Telepathically, I was searching yes. for the word. <laughs> yeah, that telepathically communication, it happens through neurolinguistic language, through signs and symbols. By understanding the signs and symbols, and that system can have tools that you're using, similar to computers in these cases. But um, in our case as human beings, our computer will be the sports celebrum and the medulla of Lankata where it, it stores each and everything that we observe. So that communication, you understanding your own brain, it will give you a clarity of having higher forms of communication like cleoverance, telepathy, uh, all psychic uh, communication per se. The question before this, so are you recommending that when we pray, we should pray in our own indigenous vernacular or mother tongue? Uh, when you pray, you need to pray in a language that you understand. Symbiology will be the best. What is symbiology? Uh, that is why a priest carry an incense, mm. to burn an incense, saying that they communicate with spirit. That is why a priest will have a cross. That is why a priest will have signs of way, raising hands and all those kind of things. Those are symbiology that is neuro-linguistic language. 
properly got understand because it doesn't have any category where it belongs. What I'm hearing is that you should pray in the language that you're most fluent in, number one, mm-hmm. num- uh, so that you don't sound like a child. We mm-hmm. hear it when soccer players, some soccer players are interviewed and they struggle to articulate themselves. I don't know why in South Africa we're still forcing people that don't have a grasp of a language to answer in those languages. Amapun as an example in rugby. Sometimes they'll be asked, how did the, how's the game? Niag Volnet, Donkey say, they go into the language that makes them feel confident. Confident. The second thing I'm hearing is the power of symbolism. Yes, um, my mother and I were having a conversation about how we used to use symbols, what today in, in technology speak, we call emojis. Mm-hmm. And why are we not communicating in that? Because it transcends. Yes. The, the Bua people you're speaking of, you're saying they are of India. And obviously we have Bua here in South Africa. Is there any link? There's a link, say, um, there's um, what we call human migration in evolutional studies, geography. But now that evolutional study is not accurate. In history, it is told that black people have migrated all around. When they landed from the sky, since they are from the stars, their story is ancient. Black people have ancient people. When they land here, they migrated to all the places around planet Earth, civilizing people they encounter who were planeters, who were living here, whom we found here. So that is why you'll find people who have similar language like us in South Africa, but they are far. Same as the Inca dynasty in America. When you see the Inca dynasty, they have the god called Yakatan, also known as Tlatlamashono or Tlutlakan. And we in South Africa, we have Tlatlamashono, Ramulok. And Ramuloki has a lot of details of talking about the childbirth, the origin of men. That is why they talk about Lowe coming out of the cave, just living. That's our creational story. Mm-hmm. Then when we talk this creational story, we are explaining our migration, our existence all around the world, how we have influenced civilizations. You're saying, <laughs> I think this is the first time I'm hearing this. Almost everyone tends to agree that... Uh, all human life was born in, in Africa, on the African continent, and then spread out. So at some point, the confusion was in, why are the white people, Indians, Chinese, what led to those black people converting into that? Was it the climate? Was it diet, etc.? Now you're telling me, or telling us, black people came from the stars onto yes, planet Earth. Yes, sir. To, in a, to a kid, it's, we came as aliens yes, onto sir. this planet. And we already found other people living here. Yes, sir. And we have come to influence them, which now speaks to, and I know you guys touched on this in the past, uh, the pyramids that were built were built by black aliens, which is us. Yes, sir. And we are now interacting with species we found here and even breeding with them. Yes, sir. Is, is that your argument? And does that mean you don't believe in the argument that life originated in Africa and then spread out from there? No, there's no such a thing like that. Why they say life originated in Africa, it's because the people who have the center of knowledge and the history of mankind and its origin there in Africa, that is us black people, who come from the sky. And when we are from the sky, the plan in one of the sagas Baba Kredo Muta talks about, you can get it in Zulu Shaman. In the Zulu Shaman, Baba Kredo Muta does explain about the origin of black people, how we came from the sky through the two twins who are from the Cyrus star. These two twins, uh, we had a, a time to live in, in the Cyrus Star. When we were invited by the people of Cyrus Star, when we were living with them, uh, we became forbidden because we did something wrong. We ate one of them. That's our problem always. So we were cast... Oh, sorry, sorry, what's our problem? We eat. We ate one of the amphibian Cyrus people. So it, it is a, a curse, like eating a fish. You know, that is why somewhere in other communities of black people, it is forbid. So when we ate that fish, it became a, a, a treason. Mm. And with that treason, we were forced to go to be exiled from the Cyrus. Since we're exiled from our own planet, where we are from, it's beyond the Cyrus. It's in the Spada galaxy. That is where we had wars. There still wars there. There's sky was. Mm. So we migrated to this place. And then when we came here through the Cyrus elders, two of the twins make sure that they feel pity for us since we are under treason. 
And then when they feel pity, they took us here to planet Earth. They are called Paku and Maku. You can get that story in Zulu Shaman of Baba Kredomut. When they came here, another one got married with the sea creatures, meaning the people who are living in the seas. And then this other one saved us from the great threat of the dragon who was coming for its egg that we used to come here with. That is the spaceship, by the way. And the dragon, it's the military that we were running away from. Are, are, are you saying black people and what people call aliens have got a relationship? Yes, sir. Are you saying black people are aliens? Yes, we are aliens. Sir. We are from beyond even this galaxy. We are not from this kind of constellation. Do you have a sensitivity and a perspective on people that will listen to this and say it sounds like insanity? It sounds like, uh, I don't know if you know Marvel Comics. Yes, sir. The Avengers, Spider-Man, Black Panther. This sounds similar. The, what, the, what makes it not a concocted story of an imagination of someone? Let's get to... Um, Who's this elder, the founder of the Marvel? Stanley. Stanley, the, the, may peace be with him. When Stanley visited uh, South Africa, he came as a secret tourist. Mm. And then he visited the great Honorable Baba Kredomot. <laughs> so, like David Icke did as well. Yes, just David Icke made it commercially. So what I'm trying to say is that Hollywood is influenced by our sagas. The Spider-Man saga, it's the same story as who uh, you, Enki. You get Enki in, in, in Kenya. There's Enki, the great teller of the stories. Even in the Ogan gods, Enki is a great teller of the stories and he's a spider. Even in the Dogon, you get the spider being called Dada Adana. And then Dada Adana, he's the one that spread, and, uh, uh, what, spread his... Uh, webs, the spider that it shoots, like mm. Spider-Man. The Spider-Man is influenced by African legend, same as Batman. It's influenced by Umulumulu, who used to fly in Deben. You know, they used to see that. Uh, it, it's, it's the same thing. These things are, um, are a part of our life, and we exist with them. Some of them are relative friends or relative families. We are cousins with them. I've heard you say he's a Zulu man. Um, in the past, the previous episode that we've done, something you said earlier, Guti, we are people of the skies. Is there a relationship between us being, as you're saying, originally being people of the skies and the name Amazulu? Yes, it's, it's the same thing. Most people I heard that when I say Zulu means uh, the sky traveler or the space traveler. They say, no, Zulu started 200 years ago. I understand. It's a history you were told by the colonists. And you need to know that Amakwa, the Zulus, when Jama uh, uh, became a king of the Zulus, they were even called Zulus by that time. That is why uh, uh, the son of Jama and the children, I mean to say the old ancestors, Zulu and Zwite, uh, why Zulu was called Zulu with that name as an ancestor? It's a name that was called through the ancestors, which means it's a name we carried. That, oh, I may call myself through my ancestors' ancestors' name. That is Zulu. So Zulu has been existing pre the dynasty of Ilembe, or what we call Upkos Belembe. Uh, that is King Shaga Zulu, according to people who use the narrative of Shaga Zulu. But at the end of the day, Zulu is the oldest saga. You may found that most of the population we have as black people, they are Zulus. Why? Because you are a descendant of the sky dwellers. Everybody, even in Kenya, they talk about their ancestors coming from the sky. When we go to Egypt, they talk about the gods landing, coming from the sky, landing in the reeds. And when they came out of the reeds, they came out with teachings, same teachings we get here in South Africa about the gods in, in Freedom Park. Same teachings we will get when we go outside Africa, when people at limb, like the Shinto in Japan, at limbs that it came with the gods from the sky. Like the Celtic Stone Age, they claim that a comster 
meaning it was from Africa. It came as a power of Africa. And the center pillar of the stone, it is still written, the tech of that, this came with Africans. South Se- is Irish. The, the, Irish, the Irish stones, or what we call Britishian tom- uh, stones. What, I don't know what they call them. The stones there in Britain. They have a name for them. Not Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Okay. Yes, the Stonehenge. It's called like that. It's from Africa. You must ask the Irish. The Celtic would do rituals there. That is why they say it's a calendar system, same as the Inzalolanga Stone Age, the megalithic stones you found in Inzalolanga. Same stones you'll found in Keberkel in Iran. They have the same significance and same teaching that talks about people who are from the sky and coming to civilize us. There's a couple of questions I have to ask, and I, I don't think I'm going to get through all of them. Um, you say black people were, they committed treason, they were banished, and then the twins brought them here. As, yes, sir. As, as a cursed people. Yes, sir. Yes. But they came with knowledge coming from another galaxy. Thank you, sir. Why has it been that it's been easy for the dwellers of this planet, who I'd like to think are inferior beings, to still be able to, to colonize and oppress us as a black people that come from, as a higher intelligence? Okay. How you black people were colonized, it's not how you were taught stories of colonization. You were colonized because now white people have reached the climax of understanding, meaning knowledge system. And then the knowledge they have reached, they've discovered that you are not violent anymore since you are from treason. You have chosen to be in peace with everything. Mm. And now they've taken advantage of your peace. Jeez, that makes a lot of sense. When you spoke about the animals, sorry, Spusis. Okay. When you spoke about the animal that we ate, an animal we are not supposed to eat. Yes. Sir. How does that link to how we live now? Is there a chance it's, that it's even not on a, Earth, it's not an animal? It's oh, it a, wasn't an animal. It's a human being. It's oh. just we, in our view, will say it's an animal. Oh, okay. So, so there's no link between that because you mentioned something about certain spaces where they still don't eat certain fish, as an example. Yes. It, it, is there it, certain foods? Are there certain foods we're not meant to be eating? Yeah, there's food that is forbidden to eat. Like whales are living human beings. They are children of Park who got married with the queen of the seas. The whale? Yes. What, which other foods and animals are we not meant yeah, to like eat? The f- I want to know about the... Why do other races have got what other people would call stronger melanin than the other? And other people would call melanin from black people carbon. Yes, we have carbon because we are carbonated people who pass through next to the sun. Let's explain this. If I have a spaceship that is going to pass next to the sun, whatever protection we have as a spaceship that we are internally protected from neutralized gas or CO2 gases, we are safe. But at the end of the day, we are not safe from the rays of the sun. The heat will penetrate whatever protection. It still penetrates even in here. You can protect yourself in a cave, but you can feel the heat under the basement of your cave. That the sun is hot. So the heat can penetrate in, even into higher protected layer densities. So we passed through the sun, next to the sun, by coming with Mpaku. Remember the legend. So we, there's legends of us traveling the stars. The stars passing through the sun here in planet Earth, it's our only star. Here in the Milky Way galaxy, the only star we have, it's the sun, apparently, in our universe. There's no many stars. So we pass through these stars. We're going to absorb a lot of melatonin tissues. That is why it's called melanin in Greece. It means it traces from the language mele, meaning heat. That's a Greek word, meaning heat. Mm. And it means fire, melakoni. That is why we use the word melakoni when it's under fire. Hence why Shakespeare, in his words, he used such a word as mele to identify dark skin. Mm. Same as moro or moose or mo in Spanish or in Latin. That's where we get the name the Moors, St. Maurice. Why, why is it that other people have got stronger melanin than the other? It's because we pass through the sun, next to the sun. That is why it's genetically inherited. You inherited from your fathers, grand-grand-grandfathers, who came here from the stars. And then others didn't? They are not from the stars, sir. 
they're from here. Yes. What, what happens when a melanated, melanated person, a black person that came from the sky and the stars, breeds with <laughs> the descendants of pigs, as an example? There's nothing wrong. We, you continually create human beings, but the genetics will be superior because it's from the melanated people. That is why there's interbreeding, miscegenization that happened in slavery, mm. uh, what we call picnic, pick and nigger. It happens through interbreeding that uh, the genes of the white people may be strong. Hence why the royal house, with may peace be on the queen, the royal house contain the genes of black people. Mm. That's their secret. You spoke so, about... Sorry, say that again. The royal house in Britain contain black genes. Is it? I've yes. read those stories. The, the Moors, is there a link there? E the Morris story is to misdirect you because okay. it's all about St. Maurice. There's a guy called St. Maurice. There's a church and there's a celebration in Europe for that. He was a black man. That's why they are called Moors. They are children of St. Maurice. But now there's a royal symbiology of how royalty will build itself. They had to breed with black people in order to have what we call strong genes. So the, the British royal family essentially has got melanated blood in them and you're arguing, or from what you've said, it, it, you're arguing because they have melanin and they come from outside the galaxy, they merged with the people that you said reached the highest level of knowledge, which yes. included violence, which we didn't have anymore. And that breeding of the, the black melanin and in these the, people, yes. these white people, what we call white Europeans, that creates a higher type of human being? Is that it creates a, a different species. Not a higher form? Not higher form, a different species. Strong genes. It's just white people don't have strong genes. Um, I'm not being racist. Let no one take me as if I'm racist, but let's be factual about it. White people cannot survive slavery. Not at all. Mm. We live under slavery in these harsh conditions and we still can smile and be happy. White people cannot do that. There's a doctor in America who make an experience. And then this doctor said, I will take a mile of all you, my white kids, and you need to live like black people. They couldn't survive at all. Because mm. they don't have genes like that. They don't have such power or strength. You have such a strength that you can live under a persecution and still smile. What is the highest level of human being in the modern context? Should we be, should I be breeding with darker-skinned women? Uh, since we're talking about the breeding part, I wouldn't mind breeding with darker women because they have strong genes. As, as long as they're educated maybe by the Europeans who are comfortable with violence? Uh, people are educated by Europeans, all of them, all of us. Even me, I'm talking English language, though I've never been in school. So it's a form of communication. It doesn't matter if a person, they are educated by Europeans, so long they can give you better stock. Jeez. I would like to understand the, um, the artifacts, I'll call it that, or Omunyumun Tomtlame Ngeslogu, she would call it Indugu. But uh, for me, it looks familiar to some of the uh, pieces that the great Coco Credo Motor used to carry. Oh, the artifacts it's done eventually by grandson of Baba Credo Mutua. Okay. Yeah, he has done it for me as a gift. And then it has symbiologies that are family related, meaning Zulu symbiologies. That is why uh, here this guy has Imikabo, mm. as you all know. And then here we have a Swatika. The mm. unconquered the son. Yeah. The unconquered son. So this is an artifact that he does, like art. He does art. He's too art. But now he put this slot that is from Baba Credo Muta's garment in order to give me, he, the way he said it, that ang funa ube namaja ndo anayam ya bona gutimo hamba. You know, the way, that's what he said. So he gave it to me, like, as a gift. Like, he made it for me. I did go to him several times and he told me that, no, I'm going to do a, a scepter for you so that you can carry it, that you may, people may know about your knowledge system. And when they ask you about Tumkulu Baba Kredo Muta, you can show them this scepter because you are carrying the incense of Baba Kredo Muta. 
the the cloth, which means it's from the garment that he used to wear. Because I can see the similarities with the some of the big sculptures that yes, he personally built himself when he was yes, still alive. Sir. That the, is why it's the, a four at faces. The, at the it's village. a four faces, meaning the four constellational. Um, I mean to say the four corners of the universe, the four corners of galaxies, the four corners of everything. The four corners are the balance of the cross. That is why we have a cross symbol, meaning the four corners. That is why Jesus Christ was crucified in the cross. He's the sun, the sun that is always crucified by the four corners of the universe. Like the way the sun is coming back now, according to the springtime, it was crucified during the winter. That is why we had the coldness, the darkness, and the sourness, and the dryness of things. I think it brings the conversation to the season that we are entering now. Yes. We're going to Inzaloe Langa um, with Mkun Tsingiza, and the conversation there has been around the African calendar, as they would call it. And from September being the season of, as they would call it, the African New Year. Your understanding? Uh, I will tell you one thing that uh, there's no such a thing as African calendar. Sorry if I may maybe <laughs> offend, dis anyone. offend anybody, but I would like to speak the truth. There's um, several calendars Egypt Kemet has uh, created, and then these several calendars have different ushering of movement. And there's a Cyrus calendar, there's a Venus calendar, there's a Jupiter calendar, there's all these forms of movement that the astrologers calculated and they were called the hour priests. So these hour priests who could identify movements in the skies and then made calendars through this movement. That is Thank why we have a constellational calendar also known as the zodiac. So there's no such a thing as African calendar, but there's such a thing as keeping up with the time that you are in. And then keeping up with the time that you are in, you get to relate with the nature and keep timing with the nature that is in. That is why in Africa, in the Southern Hemisphere, we have the spring that we have it, that we are going to approach. It's the Southern Hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, mm. they had their spring during March. You know, that is why the Jewish calendar started during March because it started during the spring of the Jews in the Northern Hemisphere. So everything, it has its own accuracy. Like people who are at the sites like Northern East or not Depth, they, they will get different calendars. Like the, the Halloween <clears throat> that is happening during the 2nd of November. It's summer day, meaning it's the inception of the summer or the end of the summer. That is why, um, the end, I mean to say, it's the end of the summer. That is why they have a celebration of the dead. And that celebration of the dead is called Mudos Andosa, or the day of the dead. You know, we all know about it. We celebrate it. But that Halloween, we never knew that Halloween means it's the end of the summer. They are approaching a winter season. That is why it has scary tactics, a trick or treat or take or treat because they believe that spirits descend from wherever they are so you need to be trick or take a treat mm -hmm. so either you give these children sweets or you get tricked by the spirits i, I want to ask you remind me of dr sebi dr sebi who never went to school and you mentioned that you didn't go to school yes sir how practical is it to get to your level of knowledge uh without the English language, or let me, let me put it more bluntly, is it possible to get to your level of knowledge with only an indigenous language such as Isizulu, is Kosa, yes. Sepedi as an example? And number two, um, how do other people that desire to get to your level of knowledge, how, how do they do that? Are there books they read? Is there a journey they can go through? I'll, I'll, I'll just tell them a simple thing. Since everybody is talking about uh, secrecy. I'll just tell them that go and knock somewhere. Maybe they can give you a, a door to come in so you can get something. That's how they can reach. They need to knock somewhere. And knocking somewhere, you need to knock, go and make maybe a three-time knock to the Freemasonry or the Secret Society or the Sangomas. I don't know. But at the end of the day, if they want that, they need to work hard for it. How, how do we get to your level of knowledge you, outside you, of the language of English? You work hard for it. You knock. You go and knock in the Sangomas. As, as a Zulu person, can I speak about the Greeks? Can I speak yes. about 
the stars? Can I speak about the science? You speak Penuel, of the maths. Penuel, God, let me tell you. You call yourself God. I am, I am God, yes. <laughs> yes. I used to be called God. That's something I grew up with. But let me tell you something, God. When someone wants to know something, they've already known it. Baba Kredomuta said, when you want to know, you reach to the two silver fish and go and ask them anything they will tell you. Our ancestors knew that, that when they wanted to know something, they go to the river, the ever-going river, also known as the waters of infinity, and go and ask these two silver fish a question. And then these two silver fish will give you answers of everything around. So you need to meet these two silver fishes to reach my level. I have met them. I always talk with them. These are real fish? Yes, sir. It's, Where? It's in symbiology system. It's just you wouldn't understand it until you are initiated. It is not a state of mind. It is a real Okay, let's, let's, let's put it simple in, in, in the way a, a white person says. A white person says uh, we need to reach the deep eternity of ourselves and we need to open our spinal cord so that the energy flow can flow in a dedicated positional flows. And then through that flow, it can have 144,000 influence in our psyche. So it's the same thing the Bible says, that uh, the 144,000, they were the ones who were chosen uh, to be the elected ones who are holy in the heaven of God, where there's 12 gates, three from different position of four corners, meaning three from the other side, three from the other side, three from north, east, west, and south. Is there a chance that you are a chosen person? It seems like Ukoko Credo Mutua was chosen. It seems like a lot of children, a lot of young people, even adults that we try to speak to, absolutely refuse to listen to these types of conversations. Is there a chance that you are chosen and that you can only be chosen to have the type of curious mind to no, begin I'm not, knocking I'm, on I'm the doors? No, I'm not chosen, sir. I, 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 I'm, I'm not a chosen one, sir. I, I was just born like everybody. And I'm privileged that my grandfather taught me a lot. And I was initiated in the secrecy of the secret. And it's an African traditional initiation, not Freemasonry, not nothing. The same way Baba Kredo Muta was initiated, just I don't want to divulge it and talk about who take me and what happened. But I was initiated. At the age of three years, I disappeared. And I was initiated at the age of 21. And I was initiated even at the age of 30. Why must people, black people, learn what you know? And how does it help us win in this world that we live in? Because it feels like, it feels like we are losing. It feels like we are still oppressed. It feels like we are poor. It feels like we are broken. What is the purpose of learning all this knowledge that you have? And how does it impact the lived, what we call a lived reality in this world? We learn this knowledge so that we can rebuild something new. Uh, Egypt was built through the knowledge that I'm talking about, <coughs> that we are all interested in. This knowledge, it's, it's a builder of forms. It, it can create. You can create different things. I was explaining to some other Sangoma that we need to interfere, uh, we need to infiltrate hospitals. We need to infiltrate places where Sangoma have these tools. The Sangoma study about medicine. And the medicine, it's something that people are curious about and concerned. And we are strike about with viruses that can be cured. And we are told about viruses that make us to isolate ourselves. Mm. So we need such knowledge system in order to come out from this evolutional progress or process or the time that we are in of viruses. Because we are experiencing these viruses because of our evolutional mind and thinking. And the people who are in charge of these minds, they are less informed. I know that people will talk about uh, Britain being in charge or America. They are less informed, trust me. They are learning from us. Mm. The CIA sent a lot of investigators in South Africa so that they can learn from Sangoma's secrecy of things that can help South America. America has made a research on psychology on traumatical experiences that they've never learned about, such as being possessed by the spirit, such as having 
Ankara normal activities. So they come here in South Africa to come and learn that in within the Sangomas. I've met a lot of them. It's just I'm not a CIA and I'm not going to expose them. <laughs> but I have met a lot of them who are making a research for Washington, D.C. Wow. Till today? Yes. They are studying us. We are a study. This is an unfair question because I, I don't even know if you can give me an answer. Is there a chance that all the knowledge that you have is, is incorrect? Yeah. And, and that might be the reason why I'm speaking for you and on behalf of all black melanated people. No. Is there a chance that the information that have been passed on by Mkuluako and other people is incorrect and that's why we're missing it, number one. And number two, should we be taking on learning violence, which you say we don't have? You know, um, my knowledge is not correct. It's not incorrect. It's just knowledge. It's just I know. I'm just the empty vessel that has welcomed everything, whether it's new or old, meaning I'm empty. I don't know anything. So I wouldn't say it's correct, no incorrect. Okay. So it's just knowledge. Okay. And it's proven by a factual experiment. That is why we say it's scientific knowledge because of proven data. Mm. So uh, in learning, people can learn it and they can try by all means to use the same systems as white people. Let me tell you something. I was talking with a vet student when before they make what we call fees must fall protest. I told them that in order to have this protest, you're going to have a powerful influence. But now this influence is going to be dull and useless. In three years after to come, you'll be nothing and you'll never be known. You can call yourself four list, but you'll be the already the fallen one because mm. you are not an influence. But try by all means to change the law. You'll be known generation to generation to come because you have already changed what influenced our life. Don't tell me about paying a fees, but if we are changing a law, don't you think we'll have a law that says a poor child must come and learn without paying fees. Mm. But with a law that is influencing now, you cannot change anything. You can protest for whatever you protest for, but so long you attack the law, mm -hmm. you can change everything. And to explain that, I coupled it with a code to tell them that in the absence of violence, in the absence of violence, or in the absence of law, the only supreme law is violence in war. So you are under war. You were under war during colonization. Mm. It is still war. It doesn't mean war has to be violent. That is why your laws are violent. That is why you are violated by the laws they've brought to you. They ensuring you, they ostracize you from everything. So you need to have violence in order to take over. I, I'm, I'm not the one who say I'm justifying violence, yeah. but in order for you to win back what you stolen from you, you need to be violent because it was taken from you with violence. Mm. So if you go think you're going to be peaceful and protest peacefully, trust me, <laughs> you can sing we will overcome like the Martin Luther <laughs> and they will assassinate you. And then it will be the end of the story. We'll read about you in the books. Ash, you, you keep reminding me of uh, the great Dr. Khalid Mohammed. May so rest in peace. If you don't know Dr. Khalid Mohammed, guys, go research another scholar of um, Elijah Mohammed, Dr. Khalid Mohammed. You know Khalid? H highly melanated. Aye. With aye, a bald head. Aye. She's got a China. Votumli, lo mai volumlo. Highly melanated. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Khalid became a problem in, in the nation of Islam. I don't want to talk those internal politics because yes, don't be jumping into, into our uh, pro podcast and going to the YouTube and telling me <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a right black person and all those things. Mm. But at the end of the day, Elijah Poole and Fat Wallace, they are a big fraud. How? But... What can you do when us black people don't have anything, we can run for any leader? That's how it is. That is why we have a careless, corrupt leaders. It's because all frauds do make sense. 
My last question. Is it possible to have melanin but not be of the melanated people? You speak of the British royal family having uh, influences of melanin because in part of their lineage they had black people in them. Is it possible that some of our African leaders are, just have melanin but might be European in their descendants? In their descendants and yeah. that's where maybe we're getting it lost that just because you are dark skinned does not mean you are originally of the melanated people. You know, uh, we are all people and we must love each other so that the war that is coming uh, from the galaxy we can fight it, all of us, as different as we are. There's a war coming. Yes. But in what you are saying is true, that um, most of our leaders have uh, white blood. That's the truth. And some of them, they may not have white blood, but they are coconuts, if you can put it like that. And some of these coconuts are initiated in these white secret societies and form of gentlemen clubs. So they need to keep up to their bosses and their master's uh, commands. Um, before we let you go, I'd like to ask two last questions. The first question is, we've organized a trip from next week, Wednesday, the 21st, mm -hmm. until the 24th Heritage Day. We're coming back yeah, on the 24th from Inzaloelang. Are we going there to learn? It's an educational tour. What is Inzaloelang? Coco Credo Muta spoke about it a lot. Uh, that is when, last year I did go, by the way, to Inzaloelang with uh, GEK. I've never been there, by the way, before I go last year. That was GEK is the great empire of Kermit. Yes. Right. Is. Yes. Oh, okay. So when we, before I reached there, I, I made a um, a, co a convenient to myself that since I've never been there and I know about the place, I know everything, let me just meditate and travel to there and see what will happen. And then, yes, I did travel to that place spiritually and then I saw myself in those river, that beautiful waterfall and then I saw myself in, in those stones and then I saw some other gentlemen. And after when we reached there, Physically, when I go with the GK, everything was like that. But these gentlemen I was with, they were not there. It's just I saw the spaceship moving up in the sky. And then when I came back, I started saying, hey, let me do these particular rituals of mine and then communicate with the elders. And one of the elders came called Marava. And this elder said to me, it was nice being with you in Zalayola. And I was amazed, Guti. I never even saw her. So <laughs> she spoke in how, what I must do to communicate and what I must do to even link with her in some other times. So, pity, typical, simple ritual, what we, one will call meditation and all those things. So when she taught me that, I was so perplexed that, wow, in Nzalo Yolanga, there's spirits that lives there. And you cannot know them. You can just see the place empty. But when you have particular rituals and systems, you can see them. So I'm, I'm, I go back to the YouTubes watching videos and I'm watching Baba Kredomuta. So it, Baba Kredomuta said it even in that one of your YouTube video. He's interviewed by some person. And he says, I've been initiated in Zalo Yolanga and I met... Marava. I'm like, what? How? This is the same person who came to me. Mm. Then this place has some significance. And this significance, we need to use it. And Marava is a woman. And in Zalio Langa, it's built as a clitoris or a vagina of a woman. By the way. I didn't know that. Maybe no one knows that. Mm. And the clitoris of the woman, it's at the gate when you start to enter. It was taken by these white people who own it as a la their land, so they made sure they make some disturbance. But the glittery of the woman's vagina, it's at the gate mm. when you enter in Nzaloyolang. But the whole Nzaloyolang establishment, it's a woman's vagina. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, and what do you think that may mean? It means that uh, the same thing I told you about um, Tlamutlamashon, 
Ramuluki. Let's go to the Sutus. Sutu doesn't mean brown. Sutu, the Setu, that's brown. And then Sutu means the vagina. Kiputu. Pupu. That is why in Lesotho they have a national anthem that says, we going back to where we come from, Lesotho. Some cover. Going back to... Yeah, Lesotho. Ki... Oh. Um, mm. The origin of men is from the thighs of the woman. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm scared to ask this question. There's you so can much ask, to learn. You can ask. You can ask. No, I wanted to ask... Um, I remember when I was reading The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown and one of the debates was this concept that we worship a, a dead man, the Jesus Christ, instead of worshiping the woman who actually gives life. Yes. That fundamentally from a religious perspective, and this is where patriarchy is problematic, we are meant to worship women who are the givers of life versus worshiping men because it doesn't make sense. So I wanted to ask, and I'm saying this question is fun, it's, should we be placing more emphasis on the woman's vagina, worshipping the woman, worshipping her vagina, treating it as a sacred space? I'm speaking about us as men and obviously for women themselves to worship their own That's vaginas as the gateways of life. Which is, Sisi, take care of your gateway and make sure that any man who comes here also worships it accordingly. Yes. You know, a, a vagina is the most important issue when we talk about it. Because a religious belief is based on a worship of a vagina and the worship of a penis, meaning a phallic worship. The cross, it's like two testicles on the upper where there's a loop, a tau. Have you seen the tau cross or the tau tree, the T? Where it makes a T, it's testicles. Mm. Where it's so straight, it's your phallic, your, your cock. Mm. So the same applies to Virgin Mary when she's praying. The halo that shine on her, it's like a vagina. You can get this symbiology everywhere. The ankh, it's the womb. It's the same as a womb. Mm. And the tau cross, obviously, the cock. It's your low chakra, right? Yes, the ankh, it's a womb. Productive. Yeah, it's a womb. It's the same exactly as the vagina. Same as the um, mankwan. The mankwan or nankwam, it's an Ethiopian tau cross. They normally carry it this priest. So the nankwan, it's the same as your embryonic existence of a woman. When you look at the bones of the vagina of the embryo of a woman, they are shaped as the tau cross. The T cross. Hmm. So all these worship, we can go further into details about sorry, it. Sorry, no, go continue, continue. Sorry, yeah. sorry. No, no, about, bing bong and oh, okay. answer. They are about sensuality. Everything is about sensuality. It's a, a, it's about a man. That is why it's a father, Holy Spirit, and the Son. It's patriarchal. Mm. It's the church itself wanted to dominate a woman. So it's about the father, the mother, mm. and the child, not son, child. The, whole, the Holy Spirit is meant to be the mother. Yes. And the son is meant to be Why the Why the Holy Spirit is a mother? Because women are spiritual. Haven't you learned that? So they are hiding it. And when you pray, you pray, say, Oh, great mother of God, Saint Mary. Mm. There's no other way we can recognize woman without worshipping her because she's God. Mm. The whole entire body of a man is made out of the body of a woman. It's a clitoris that is moving all around. Your own clitoris is inside your testicles biologically. <laughs> no, seriously, this is biology. Yes. And at the end of the day, someone will say, no, you want us to be homosexual. No, you can be homosexual if you want, but I am a man, I'm a heterosexual man, and I accept that women, they're the most powerful one. Believe me, I worship a woman. I bow to a woman. Is it true that the African gods or African cultures back, back, back in the day were matriarchal? 
Yes, there were matriarchal system. Our system was matriarchal. That is why we can build civilization because of our mothers. That is why I'm saying that a worship of a woman is the most powerful worship that can ever exist. And the first person who encountered the creator God in one of the sagas when we lived far beyond here, he, before we came here in planet Earth, this woman is called Galemisa. And Galemisa uh, made a venture, as all of us, we make veg, okay, we'll have an adventure. And this adventure is to understand the creator and we need to meet the creator. And the woman, when she met the creator, she became scared. She was trembling. She, and she told everybody, hey, the creator looks this way. And they all get scared and say, hey, we don't want to talk about the creator anymore. That is why as black people, we don't have any obsession about the creator. But now we made sure that to symbolize the creator, we can symbolize the creator about what is happening to us, a man and a woman and a child. That is why in Egypt, the gods of Egypt have a wife. All Do you have, yeah, all of them, they have wives. They have children. I like that. They say African gods. African gods have wives, have children. Because that woman, Kelly, make sure that whatever she made, it must be emulated through a family system. Because if we want to emulate the source of your spirit, how it looks, it will scare everybody. The same way when Mvelinganga visited uh, mankind, the sun itself. If someone told you that gods never live with men, they have a big problem in understanding our culture. Mm -hmm. They need to know our history and our stories. When Mvelinganga came here and visited human beings, he was rejected when he came as a bright star or the bright morning sun. When he came to them, they were scared that no, illumination of, that such illumination we can uh, uh, observe it. And then they chase Mvelinganga away. And then when they chase Mvelinganga, he made sure that, okay, I may possess a body. There was a young man who was about to die. You can get that story in uh, Isiluane, written by Baba Kredomutu. So when that young man died, Mvelinganga possessed the body. And he came to the community and teach them. And he light fire for them. He teach them how to plague the stone. He teach them how to do a lot of things, different kind of things. He wouldn't come to them if he can't be a, a human being. Mm. So gods had chances to be human beings. And it is said in the old saga, you cannot get it in the books, but it's told under initiation. And since everybody wants to know, I must tell them this. It is said in the oldest times, men lived with God. And when men lived with gods, they could talk with gods, interpret with gods. That is why us black people have these genes of the gods. Last question, recommendation or book recommendations. What books can you recommend that any young people or people who are bumping into this content and they want to um, grow their knowledge around the space. Some of the books that you think might have changed your life or that you, can, that you may recommend for our audiences. Uh, maybe, literature maybe three is li books. Literature is literature for me. And there's no book who changed my life. Even a magazine <laughs> can change my life. <laughs> so yeah. I read everything, even um, Did you Chippies, know Chippies. Chippies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, like I'm, a, I'm that person. Yeah. Since I never had a privilege to go to school. So I wouldn't recommend a book. Yeah, well. okay. So what I will say, I will recommend is one book that I like, that everybody should have at their house. In Daba, my children, Zulu Shaman, uh, Isilwane. You should have those books. These are books. The, the great, by yeah. the great credo. Yes, water. these are great books. And then there's other books that are written by other white people or either black people. But some books will lead you somewhere. You will have a different perspective about things, thinking that I took such perspective seriously. But I was reading it as a literature and critically thinking about it. So, but you, you're advising that we must be critical thinkers. Yeah, you, that's the best way to study. You must be a critical thinker. You need to study critical thinking or critical psychology. I studied critical psychology as a researcher doing research in Vets University. Uh, I got access of the library through some chick who was my chick. He gave me my car, his card, her card, and then I could go inside the library. Because women are the gateway yes. to knowledge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, 
I studied a lot of literature there and I will research about critical psychology and critical studies. And I found that, that to have critical thinking, it helps a lot. It may never help to solve problems, but it may help for your mind to discern what is good and right, what is wrong, you know, such thing. It may give you sane thinking. There's a disease called Zorian disease. It was made by a, a young man in 1979 in Russia. So this young man was given a class test. And then in that test, uh, he, he made everybody to believe that clean water is harmful for them. So everybody believed that in school, and they called that a uh, psychological disease, Zaharianism. So in this nowadays, we have such a disease where people, they are told that clean water is harmful for them. Mkulu Zamalek Giza. Go follow his social media platforms. On Instagram is Zamalek666. Maybe before we go, some people asked me from the previous episode, why do you have triple six on your Instagram handle? Yeah, it's a long story. Though. I'll make it short. <laughs> the mark of the, of the demon. Yes, because <laughs> I was told that it's a mark of the beast. And I don't know what is the beast, but I will put it into details. I was, I, I, I'm not familiar with technology. So I'm registering a, 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 a Twitter and uh, Instagram. So while I'm registering, the person who's helping me, he's trying to tell me that they don't register all, you know, there's a lot of Zamalek. In fact, there's Zamalek FC there in Egypt, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I'm saying, no, man, use number seven, you know, like these holy numbers, as people will say, use number seven, and then it never register. I said, use number six, and it never register. And then I started telling him that maybe use triple six, Surely it will register, and truly it did register. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Follow his social media platforms. There's so much to learn. There's all these conversations that are happening everywhere, but it's beautiful that the conversations are getting louder, and it's teachable moments that we are in, and it's times of uh, inform. It's the information age. So whether you consume correct or incorrect information, it's totally up to you, depending on what platforms you're consuming, you're consuming it from. But I like what Umkulu just said, would be learn to be a critical thinker. So you make your own decisions, you do your own research, you don't just take in anything and everything that is said by everybody. We just encourage education here. We are an educational platform. We don't do none of these to benefit anything. And we are pro all races. We love everybody. <laughs> and we're just here to learn. And I'm glad that you guys got a chance to learn with us today. And thank you very much to Mkulu Zamalekiza. Your last words to the people? Yeah, my last words is that you need to have love, everybody. Love each other. Stop hating each other. We have suffered for a long time, so we need to just spread love. Love is the only key. He says he's working on his uh, YouTube platform. Yeah. People need you to teach. So when are you opening it? They, I've, I've been trying to, as I've told you, I'm not good with technology, so I'm keeping up. This. But you said some youngsters are helping you. Yeah, they, they always help me and run away. Maybe they want to eat. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they do help me, but some of the things I can't do with them. Yeah. I need to wait for them like, mm. to come, you know, mm. such use, things. I think use your phone. Just get a good phone. No, I'm, I'm not even good to use my phone. My phone has a lot of problems. Mm. You know, I have different phones. Uh, I had Blackberry. I still have Blackberry. Yeah. And people don't have Blackberry no. anymore. Yeah. Uh, which means I don't know how to use a phone. People advance. I'm still staying in the same place. But it's your choice. Not a choice. I don't know how to use a phone. <laughs> <laughs> the only way is to call. Like call, write. I have Facebook from a long time. Mm. But I take time to update. Sometimes I update something and then it gets deleted. I don't know if I delete it or it deletes itself. I don't know. No, we'll invite you here more because there's a lot of information that needs to be um, learned out there. And I know that you're very knowledgeable in a lot of topics. And I like the fact that before you come, every time when we throw an invite towards you, always say, what's the agenda? What's the topic? What is going to be discussed? Is it going to be a debate? Is it just going to be an ordinary interview? I like that because you've got so much to offer. So guys, follow his social media platforms and we'll make sure he comes here as often as he can Please. So, so we can learn. Yeah. No, fundamentally important. Guys, I know you said people must go wild in the live chats. People mustn't forget to join as members to help us to be able to bring guests, to try and get mics and all those mm -hmm. things. We need a little bit of resources. 
we'd ask you guys to bring mics but because of technology and space and time we use money so that we can turn those into real valuable items so mm -hmm. please join as a paying member it really means a lot to us Thank you so much, guys. We appreciate you. Thank you for keeping that um, live chat comment section busy. Let's continue to keep it busy. Let's keep on learning. Let's not be. Uh, let's not use profanity when we disagree with one another. Mm -hmm. It is allowed to disagree with one another. It is allowed for all of us to have different views. But let's respect each other's beliefs. We love you very much. We'll see you guys uh, once again. Remember, on the virtual Mkuku platform right now, we're starting at one o'clock. Oh, it's already after one, guys. We've got another episode that side on virtual Mkuku. Let's go. Let's go. Cheers. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. <laughs>